All right, welcome back. Category and Talent, episode 175. Um, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Draft America has launched their podcast. Go check them out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, they're short, 15-minute, quick hitter episodes. You're going to get at least mics. I'll, I'll be on there from time to time, but I don't think I'm going to be on there recurring. Um, but you'll get mics, you know, immediate reaction to stuff uh, after football Sunday especially. Um but we're going to cover uh, every single game, at least spend a, a minute or two on every single game, and then uh, do bets as well uh, after that. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. All right. So, Mike, tough one on Thursday. Let's let's open up with uh, Chiefs Ravens. Really tough one. Yeah, I mean, my takeaway was more from the the game itself. Obviously, the ending is what people will remember. You know, losing by a toe it would have been interesting to see if uh, if they had gone for two. Um, you know, that Harbaugh had two fingers up, so it looked like they were going to go for the win had they scored, yeah. um, which would have been. Uh, a big deal because nobody scored 28 points on the Chiefs in two years. Uh, but uh, I thought that the it played out the way that I kind of thought in terms of the offensive line could not block Chris Jones. I mean, Lamar was on the move on almost every play. They ran Derrick Henry, but maybe not enough. I thought defensively they, they didn't play great. They really got burned over the middle. I mean, I think a lot of teams are going to get burned by worthy speed this year. Uh, but it seemed like they were really picking on the middle of the field. And, you know, Andy Reid, if he finds a weakness, he'll expose it. Um, it, it was a disappointment. I mean, honestly, it's the symmetry. You, your season ends with a seven-point loss to the Chiefs. Your season now begins with a seven-point loss to the Chiefs. It, I, I don't know. My Also, my takeaway was just that it, it feels like every game is going to pale in comparison to this moving forward. I mean, they may rattle off, you know, eight wins in nine games, say, well, the Ravens are great. Yeah, but, yeah, but they haven't beat the Chiefs. Who's going to get, you know, unless, unless something crazy happens, Mahomes gets hurt, whatever. Um, it, it just feels like they're they're playing catch up now all year. And it, it's it, it was frustrating. I think frustrating for a lot of people, because even if you didn't have a vested interest in the game, I'm sure you were probably rooting against the Chiefs at this point. A lot of people are. Yeah, um, I shockingly, um, I might have been slightly rooting for the Chiefs. <laughs> I don't know why there, there's something I can appreciate about a really good dynasty. Like, yeah, it sucks and everything, but there is like a, a very small part of me that, that says, you know, this is something like you still don't get to see like dominance like this. Like we saw it with Brady and now you see it with Mahomes. Like what other league has this specific type of dominance, like back to back. It's, it's kind of cool. You, you can like tell your kids about it. Um, so I was secretly quietly, quietly like eh, you know if the Chiefs win it's not a big deal right <laughs> but um yeah I, I I think I said I was happy that to see the Ravens committed to the run um that was like the one thing I think you can you know big thing you can take away from it compared to the last time they saw the Chiefs was you know they didn't commit to the run they Lamar Jackson looked afraid to run the football and then now you know they they did run and yeah they were a toe short and everything and they got some stuff to clean up but the Ravens, like if if you're freaking, you're panicking about the Ravens in week one, just stop. Like your your season's going to be a, miserable if you're panicking about this game, As, specifically this game. It did feel like the Ravens woke up a little bit towards the end too. They did, and Lamar Jackson played really well. I mean, he made a lot of plays. He, he, he Isaiah Likely was terrific. I thought clock management wasn't great there at the end. Maybe it cost him a chance to get an extra play, spiking the ball, I think. Um, and then likely was banged up on, on that play after the non spike, um, coaching again, Harbaugh going for it, leaving points on the field. Tucker misses a field goal, wondering if the chiefs are in his head from all that pregame flap stuff last year, you know, those things. I and mean, that's the thing when you play the chiefs, you, you just can't make mistakes. You just don't have a margin for error. And, um, you know, the thing about football and dynasties is that, you know, what's interesting is it's like, it's. It's a sport where one great quarterback coach combo can lead to a dynasty. Um, but when they leave, you know, like Brady and Belichick, it can turn really fast. 
Uh, but in a, you know, in these other sports, you can kind of stay consistently near the top, but you may not always win in the postseason. And but you can continue like baseball, the model of like the Dodgers, the Yankees, and they can win almost every single year, maybe forever, because the structure of the league is in place for them to succeed. But in football, you're right. I mean, it's pretty rarefied air what the Chiefs are doing, what the Patriots were able to do, what the Steelers did in the 70s and maybe the Cowboys in the 90s. I mean, there is something to be said for that. But we haven't had another team win the Super Bowl in three years and three of the last five we've had to watch, you know, the Chiefs. So I think it would be nice to see somebody dethrone them, hopefully the Ravens, but if not, somebody else. You just need a villain. You you need the villain. I, I like villain. Rudy. I like I like for the villain to be intensified, basically. Mm. I, I want the villain to be intensified because it is so much sweeter when they go down. Because like once once the villains go down once, it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But like if the the pad, you know, the Chiefs they did go down against the Bucks and it did I I actually don't know. Were people happier that the Chiefs lost at that point? Or were they upset that the Chiefs lost because it was Brady? I, I feel like a lot more people weren't weren't rooting well, for Brady was, in that situation. Yeah, it was Brady, but it was also the Bucks who, you know, seventy six Bucks creamsicle jerseys went zero fourteen. You know, this second win in franchise history. I thought it was cool that we got to see Brady be truly great and that he could go to another team and win. You know, I'm not saying yeah. Patrick Mahomes couldn't go to another team. Um, certainly now at this point in his career. Uh, but for Brady to do it at what he was 43, I think at the time he won his last Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're right. I mean, and then the Chiefs the next year didn't get there. It was the one time they didn't get there in the last half decade, and yeah. you know, we're, we're maybe a you know a, a couple of plays away from beating the Bengals in that championship game. So, um, I mean, it is incredible. Like that, the Chiefs in football, the the Astros in baseball. It's like this level of success is really hard to have and teams and fans and, you know, people everywhere um, are envious of it. And I get that. I get that. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's move on. Um, who we thought, who some people thought was going to be the next Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Jordan Love goes down. The Eagles do take down the Packers. Um, just it, it's, I think the big story uh, is the international game. And, you know, Packers had to travel, what, an hour and a half because of traffic compared to what the Eagles did. And the field was just a monster. I mean, it, you can equate it to, uh, what was it, Turfgate or something in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Just the Eagles got on the good side of it this time that they won. Um, and I think the, the other big loser was the New York Giants because Saquon Barkley looked fantastic. Yeah, that that is uh, not – surprising to see him play that well um but i just i hated the whole thing that the field conditions the staying in the hotel i mean it was a good game hopefully loves injuries not serious but um you know uh, just it, just bad optics and to start the season i mean that's i think that's the worst part that's how the season opens well i mean the second game you know but the first for those two teams very very unfortunate yeah, give me like any other game. Uh, do it any other week. Do it. Do it week three. Do it week four. Like, because because it's not like the NFL doesn't do that already. Like they they're already doing these international games later in the year. So you can't really say, oh, the NFL put it there just because it's week one to give them extra time to get there. No, they didn't. That's just not. That's false. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I mean, I do know why, but I don't know why the NFL is gonna continue doing these international games. It's money. Um, it's just not wanted. Like, I, I feel like when when they're over in the inter international games, at least it feels like there's a lot of Americans there who, again, it's good that the Americans are able to be there, but are you, how many, I don't know this, how many Premier League games are played over in the U.S., you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> not that many. <laughs> um, right. They don't really feel the need to. Because it's a, you know, it's not really an American sport. This is an American sport. Put, you know, maybe pay for special broadcast rights over there. I, I don't know. I don't know. Figure it out another way. Bring back NFL Europe. That might have been the best way to do it. And there's more on tap, right? There's more games coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like three or four international games left. But I, there's one in Germany and I think two or three in London. 
Uh, but actually, we didn't even really talk much about the game. Um, Eagles, I mean, listen, if you win sloppy, right? It's a win, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. Offenses you know, were, were on display, I think. Um, Packers are in real trouble if they're going with Malik Willis. I mean, he just, I, yeah. I can't believe he's their backup. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite bit is uh, people saying Colin Kaepernick's still out there. And he still is. Like it's he's he's what thirty five now, but he's still out there. <laughs> yeah, I think I think people when they say that they think he's been like vacuum sealed into a like just into a plastic bag, and he's just there. Like he doesn't age, he doesn't whatever. Um, but Cap's still there, man. Um, uh, Jalen Hurts forced a few. I'll say that. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, he, he didn't look fantastic. Yeah, I mean, but I think he's, I think he's still pretty, you know, top flight quarterback. I think the Eagles are in good Yeah, yeah, now. he'll, he'll figure it out. Good. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to the Sunday games. Steelers and Falcons. The Steelers kicked six field goals. <laughs> they just kicked yeah. six field goals. <laughs> they did. They did. Uh, my prop bet would have come in if not for a penalty. TJ Watt, I was going to say two sacks, right? He had a great game. He was in the backfield a lot. Um, you know, for the for the Steelers to get a win on the road in a game they were an underdog. I mean, again, I just don't know why people count this team out. Like, it's just they just play better than they are. I, I, they, they're probably not that good. They're probably not a Super Bowl yeah. caliber team. Um but they kick six, they don't score a touchdown and they win on the road against what's supposed to be a decent team. So I think the takeaway has got to be positive for Pittsburgh, honestly. Yeah, and and it wasn't even Russ. It was Justin Fields at a very right. last minute. So maybe you would have gotten your prop bet if if it was Russ. Because, you know, I can't imagine he's moving as good as Justin Fields is right now. Yeah. So um Bill's Cardinals. Cards were cards were live today. Um, they were they put up a good fight. I mean, seven, I think they were up seventeen to three at one point, and they rallied. The Bills rallied. I think my dad was even saying the Bills are just such a second half team. He was like, they're they're going to come back in the second half. And I said, no, I don't think so. I, I think uh, I think the Cards might be able to put this away. The Bills are you know maybe not as high high firepower as they have been in the past few years, but uh, oh, they got it done. Yeah, that's all you can ask for. I mean, the Josh Allen's uh, potential injury question mark about you know his hand, a short week um, going to Miami. You know they they won both games against the Dolphins last year, so um, I think it's a big early test for the Bills because I think a lot of people feel like they kind of stole one. Um, and Arizona's the team that kind of came in with house money. Remember Arizona went into Philly last year late in the year and won, um, started to show some signs of life. Obviously you know, made some improvements on their team and a year two for Jonathan Gannon. So I think still a good takeaway for the Cardinals, but Bills, I think they did kind of survive. And now they got to hope that their quarterback is healthy and still playing at a high level. Yeah. Titans Bears, Caleb Williams gets his first or gets his first win, first quarterback since David Carr to do that in his uh, first start, you know, number one pick. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it really wasn't all that much because of Caleb Williams, let's be honest. The the defense played pretty well. He led him on a couple scoring drives, a couple field goals, which, again, it's week one. I think that's all you really want out of a rookie quarterback. I think that's what the Bears have been looking for, is a quarterback to, that just won't lose them the game. And he did exactly that. He didn't lose them the game. Um, and then Will Levis, with the funniest photo, possibly in NFL history, just him, him on the ground like this. It's like, oh my God, I think it was the Surrender Scorpion is what people were calling it. Hmm. Or Surrender Cobra, Surrender Cobra. Yeah, the uh, Titans really, I mean, they're as bad as the Bears played for them to score 24 unanswered points. That really says something yeah. either about the Titans or that the Bears are a lot scrappier than we give them credit for. Um, and I think I mentioned this the other day when we talked kind of like, um, you know, Ryan Leaf in his first game played horribly and won and then Peyton Manning played bad and or play, i'm sorry the other way around uh, leaf played badly and won and and manning played great and lost and so i know that it's like it's caleb williams first game the bears found a way to win um i just don't know how much i trust tennessee i just feel like they shouldn't have gotten rid of Rabel. I, ju I just don't i i 
I think that is going to come back to hurt them more than they realize. I think Callahan is, I think they look at him as more of a yes man. You're going to get, you know, whatever yeah. the, the or upper echelons of the organization want. The, he's just going to say yes. Um, good well, offensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah, and if you remember, he's the obviously the son of uh, of Bill Callahan, who we had when we had Ryan Hogue on. You know, had yes. less than glowing things to say about uh, about Bill Callahan. So Pat's Bengals. This one, Crap. I think, yeah, Scrappy. We were definitely on this one. I think I, I took Pat's in the with the spread. Um, Wow, you know, I mean, this is the Bengals do this though, right? The the only year that they haven't done this, they actually went to the Super Bowl where they start out slow, but every other year they've struggled, really. Yeah, I think uh, for the Bengals, like you know, like I said, I think my concern had been about Burrow's first game back, and you know, again, it's not easy to just step right out on the field and um, and perform well. It, it's not. It's it's a hard thing to do, um, and the Bengals. You know, they, they have a little time now to get themselves uh, – sorry, I should say they, they don't have a lot of time now because they're going to play the Chiefs. And it's just like, oh, my God, this big, you know, showdown of two supposed Titans in the AFC. Well, they got to turn it around fast because that was ugly. Yeah. And now New England's got a good defense here. Bobby, you know, puffing up the Patriots' defense. And, and Gerard Mayo had them ready to go, and they ran the ball well. They played efficient football. I think we shouldn't just look at this as like, all oh, the Bengals – messed up, fell flat on their face. I think that Patriots played solid. We know they're not going to be a great team. This isn't, you know, Brady's Patriots, but I do think they bring a good defense. Um, And I think, you know, as far as kind of setting the tone, setting the culture for a new coach, I think this is a pretty big deal. And I think this could give the Pats some confidence to certainly at least throw themselves into the mix in the AFC East, which is not that great of a division. Yeah, it's... It's really not fan. I mean, it's it's not like the past couple of years where you've had the Dolphins who are putting seventy three points on the on the Broncos. You right. have the Bills who just seem like destined to go to the a to the AFC title game. Um, I'm not even going to mention the Jets, you know, <laughs> and the Pats who for a long time were very good, and then they had you know that good year with Mac Jones. Um, this this isn't the past few years Dolphins, Bills, or Patriots. It's probably the past few years Jets. Um, but yeah, I I don't understand why the NFL is burning their Bengals Chiefs card and Bengals Ravens card week one and two like immediately. Like, don't you want these two teams like no matter how good or bad the Bengals are, like with Joe Burrow, it's a little bit of a rivalry there, and you're burning those the first two weeks when you could get probably a more primed Joe Burrow Bengals team who's fighting for a division or just a playoff spot versus the Chiefs. I mean, what do we, (laughs) who's the schedule maker? (laughs) Fair question. (laughs) I I don't understand it either. Um, I I think they kind of missed the NFL, missed a good opportunity with those games. Um, And the Bengals, I'm sorry, the Chiefs get those games both at home, which obviously, you know, works in their favor and um yeah yeah texans colts this one hurt man um i i did wake up monday morning feeling a lot better i think about it than uh you know than the day before juju brents our starting cornerback is out for the season by the way had his a knee injury um he is done for the year i hate to say that i was right but All of my concerns about this team were in the secondary. It was with their, one, their talent, and two, their ability to stay healthy. And week one is done. We're missing a starting corner. And C.J. Stroud, in the times that he did throw the football, he tore us apart. Um, I mean, he really didn't have to throw the football because they were running the ball down our fucking throats. Um, They had the ball for 40 minutes. Like, that's the perfect indicator that they were just running the ball down our throats uh it was i'll I'll say this it was very encouraging a a very encouraging loss you know there's clear issues but there was also like a lot of really positive things like richardson was very inaccurate but he also like showed okay if if i can get the accuracy down i'm gonna be a fucking problem for everyone else um so as a colts fan 
I would say this was really this is a good game for both teams. I feel like it was a very it was a good one for both. Yeah, I mean, like the there were some great plays individually, like great throws by Richardson. Um, I mean, I, again, I think we talked about this too, like Houston's running game. That was a surprise here. Yeah. The fact that they ran the ball so well, that really changes the dynamic of how people look at the Texans, because if they are able to run the ball with those weapons, boy, does that make their offense that much better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess as a Colts fan, it's got to sting. It's kind of like the Ravens, their season ended last year, the way that it starts this year with, you know, a close loss at home to the Texans and kind of a measuring stick. But again, a quarterback that's coming off of uh, an injury that took away most of his season last year. You know, you saw some good flashes. It's not perfect by any means. You're playing a really good team too. And, and, and yeah. you know, like you said, maybe they got outplayed, actually played better than the score indicated. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, yeah, you don't want to get outplayed, but the fact that you can, um, you know, stay closer than you probably should have has got to be somewhat encouraging. Yeah, uh, Shane Steichen did not exactly put us in a situation to be able to come back when, I feel like this should be pretty self-explanatory, when you go for two early and you don't get it, you're missing, you're just missing a point. You are missing a point there. Yeah. Going for two so early is incredibly stupid because you may need that point. And we needed that point because... Instead of a two-possession game with four minutes to go, it was a one-possession game, or it would have been a one-possession game. That's, yeah, I hate, I, mean, I hate leaving points on the field. Ravens did it with, uh, you know. You need to see how the game is going to shake out before you make those big decisions, before making such a, a high-risk decision. And then at the end, at the end, Steichen didn't really seem ready for being in the red zone. We we wasted a lot of clock, which ended up not mattering because the defense didn't stop them. But what if it did? What if we just ran out of time towards it? What if we get the ball back and we have no timeouts and we just don't have enough time? Steichen was just, I don't know, he bungled down in the red zone. We scored on fourth down because Richardson literally just muscled his way through. Yeah, great just, run. That was a great run. It was a fantastic run. I, I, I jumped up and I screamed, that's a fucking man run. When mm. when he, he did that, it was hilarious. Um, but just really bungled it. He did not get... I heard someone say, oh, well, you have to take chances because you're playing a really, really good football team. I get that. Going, going for it on fourth down at midfield early in the game, I don't mind that. That's... You know, you're trying to punch him in the mouth. It was the first drive. You're trying to punch him in the mouth and say, look, we're not going down without a fight. That's fine. Because then, oh, you give them, you give them the ball at midfield. With the fucking kickoff, it's, it's going to the 30 anyways. Who cares about 20 extra yards? We were going to give that up on two runs anyways. But going for two, leaving those points on the board is way too aggressive. You don't even give yourself a chance to play hero ball. You're playing desperate ball at that point. So just... You don't leave points on the board in the first half. It, it makes no sense to me. Um, but let's move on from it. I feel like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. Uh, their side. Um, but uh, the Dolphins do walk away with a walk-off win at the buzzer. Uh, just kind of felt like the Jags were just, I don't know, it, it felt a little bit sleepwalking, I think, from the Dolphins, but also a little bit from the Jags, even though they were up 7-10. to 10, Or 17-7, 17 7, 17 nothing. Uh, it was 17-7, I think. 14 nothing, and then 17-7, yeah. That's what it was. Okay. Typical Jags, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, here I'll go. Th Here's their second half. Their second half uh, possessions. Punt, punt, fumble, downs, punt, punt. Not fun. That's not fun nope. football. Panthers, Saints. Gross. Awful. Panthers, I mean – just, might be your it. secret to winning survivor might just be picking against the Panthers most weeks. I mean, that was, uh, boy, I, I, you know, you thought, well, you know, new season, new coach, maybe they'd at least come out with a little bit of energy. Maybe, I, I mean, you figured it's not going to magically turn around, but talk about setting, setting the wrong tone, losing by what, 37 points on the road to your division rival. And um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say for the saints. I mean, like, Carr's numbers were really good. I mean, only through four incompletions and three touchdowns, no picks. And 
Um, they ran, they ran for 180 yards. I mean, like they kind of just did whatever they wanted. Bryce Young's numbers were awful again. Andy Dalton even came in and threw an incompletion. So, yeah, it, it's. I mean, again, you try not to ever overreact in week one. Teams can develop an identity over the course of the year, but this is a bad start for a two and fifteen team. Yeah, I think I checked, or I got. I was watching the Colts game, and I got a little alert at the bottom that said like Saints touchdown. I saw it was 30 to nothing. I was like, man, that game is going fast. Like they're just kicking the shit out of, and it wasn't even the end of the first half yet. Um, (laughs) They are just so bad. I wouldn't wish this. There's only one person I would wish a team to have to watch, like a team like this to have to watch. It's David Tepper. I, I hope David Tepper has to watch a team this bad for the rest of his life. I just hope it's not the Panthers. I hope it's some crappy you know, I, I don't know, arena football league team that he ends up owning after he's probably forced to sell the Panthers. Well, I, I would say that uh, I was a big Jerry Richardson fan. I know some stuff came out about him later on, but um, he was at the time the only uh, former player to own a team. And he was a big deal because he brought football to Charlotte and um, had a lot of respect for him when uh, the Panthers went to their first Super Bowl back in 03. Tepper's like the antithesis to that. And he's just it's you're right. It kind of feels like he deserves it a little bit. And then uh Vikings giants. I, I just wanted to get those yeah, out of the way. Horrible. Again, Daniel Jones is, he, he's not a great quarterback, but when you could, when you put a not great quarterback behind a really bad offensive line, he's going to be really, really bad. And I, I don't, I still, I still believe in his ability to be, like competent and win football games, you know, just don't lose the games. Um, but with a, with an offensive line like this, this is horrible. Yeah. The, the giants, why, why can't they get it right? Just, just why? I mean, if this is a proud franchise four Super Bowl wins. That's just you know, Daniel Jones, not the guy. I, I just never really believed in him. I don't really understand having a guy who's basically like a game manager. Feels like at best. I don't even. No, I mean, he didn't two even picks, manage that no game. touchdowns, and you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's just rough. And they didn't really run the ball that well. Um, and they Sam Darnold comes back to New York, different team facing him, but pretty good numbers. Got the win. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's anything to say about the Vikings in this game. It, it was the same thing with the Saints. Like you can't, you just have no words because there's nothing. They they didn't do anything. Yeah, it felt like if they just walked out there and did nothing, they probably would have won the game anyways. Um, so it'll be a test for next week. Raiders Chargers. Jim Jim Harbaugh gets his first win. Um, John Harbaugh was not there. Was he I, not I there? I don't know. I, I wasn't uh, privy to that information. I wasn't sure if, if maybe you would have seen. Um, I did look up to see if he was at the game at the time. It didn't say anything, but you never know. Uh I, I mean the Raiders, they they looked, they looked like Gardner Minshew was their quarterback. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the numbers weren't terrible. Um, Herbert had a pretty modest day, but you know I think it was a big deal for Harbaugh to, to get his era off to a good start. And you said was it was you or Bobby who said there's no way they're starting that era off with a loss. No way. I want to yeah. say it was Bobby. Um, Harbaugh, you know, he leaves Michigan. They get rocked by, uh, was it Texas or something? And and now the Chargers are undefeated. Um, yeah, hard to tell. I mean, look, Raiders, I, I just can't see them being really a factor this year. I know we got all excited when they beat the Chiefs on Christmas last year. And I like that they kept Antonio Pierce. I think he's the right guy for the job. But he, they, they got to put some talent on the field. They got to get a real quarterback. I hate to say it. I like Minshew. Again, numbers weren't bad. But he's he's more of a backup. Yeah. Um, and the Chargers also, I, I did not do too much research into this specific thing. I guess they had a offensive lineman as oh. the fullback, which I love that. That's awesome. That's my theory of just get every big guy and put them put on the front seven and just go. That's fucking awesome. I love that. Um, Broncos Seahawks. Uh, Bo Nix 
the the announcers were afraid of Bo Nix throwing the ball. Yeah, I, I saw that. There's literally a clip video of, of uh, yeah. Archuleta saying, oh, no, before he threw it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know what to say. The Broncos, I mean, it's just that division is so pitiful. It's just such an easy cakewalk for the Chiefs. Again, hard to assess the Seahawks because this is just a team that you're supposed to beat. Happy for Mike McDonald, first game, gets a win. So a couple of coaches get wins in their first game, right? Uh, um, Mayo and, of course, uh, McDonald. So I, I the Broncos, man, that's – and again, like the Giants, a proud franchise that's just just can't get it right. I mean, they haven't been to the postseason. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they haven't been to the postseason since winning Super Bowl 50 in Peyton's last game, which is crazy because they were, you know, great at the end of the 90s. They were good in the in the mid 2000s, and they had a couple. Obviously, they won a Super Bowl. They had a great four year run with Peyton Manning, and just to see them like this with. Bo Nix. Bo Nix's entire name is as many letters as John Elway's last name. I don't know why I just thought of that. It's not significant in any way, but it's just fun to think about. <laughs> Bo Nix. That's a great. That's like a. It's got to be some similarism in it. Like he's some like sort of insult. All of Bo Nix is like, only as good as like part of John Elway. You know what I mean? It's like some something symbolic there. Um. Yeah. Not. I don't. I really didn't. I try to not pay attention too much to that game. Uh, Cowboys mm. Browns, Tom Brady, give the guy a chance. Okay. Give him a chance. Um, but Deshaun Watson looks like he, he looks like he hates football. <laughs> he looks like he doesn't want to be out there. I know. And, and I do know he had some personal tragedy, um, this past wow. week. So, you know, that I'm sure that has to do with it. But even before I would say he didn't really look that excited to be out there. Like last year when he was, healthy with the Browns, he didn't look like he wanted to be there. And I mean, his, just right. his play, it was off. It just unacceptable. Yeah. 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 His demeanor does kind of strike me as a little nonchalant. Of course I used to say that about Eli Manning too, right? That his, his demeanor was like, he didn't care, but you know, Eli was passionate about what he was doing out there. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird, weird, uh, thing going on with the Browns. Like they, you know, I, I, I thought they would come out of the gate strong. Um, Dallas, we overreact to them every year. They've scored. What was it? They, you know, they've, they've had a pretty good run in these season openers. Now they've outscored because last year, 40 to zip. Um, and um, yeah, 40 to well, What do you think of, uh, of uh, Brady's debut? What was kind of the uh, consensus of that? He was raw. I mean, the, I don't think it was as bad as everyone's saying. They're, they're acting like he was like some awful, like just awful excuse for for an announcer. Like he really wasn't that bad. He was yeah. serviceable, I would say. He was Tom Brady, the backup. He was first year Tom Brady. I'll say that. And if we know anything about this guy, it's that he's able to get better and better and better. He, he knows mm -hmm. how to get better at things and he works his fucking ass off at it. And again, me, I never would I have thought I'd be saying positive things about Tom Brady, but he, I, I have faith in the guy and I'm not going to sell him out immediately. Um, was he good? He wasn't awesome, but it was fine. <laughs> he was fine. I, I still watched the game and was like, okay. I'm still watching the Dallas Cowboys. He also is going to be broadcasting the next three Cowboys Interesting. games. Like week one, two, and three, it's all Cowboy games. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get a chance to uh, see what he's made of, I guess. And, you know, for Dallas, like, look, they get a yeah. road win to start the year. Dak gets his bag, right? He, he So, he, you know, played pretty well, I guess. And like, But again, I mean, the Cowboys are one of those teams that unless they're like, 15 and two by the end of the year, it, we're not going to trust that it's really going to carry over into January. Um, and there's just a lot of teams like that, that are, you know, you sort of look at them at the start and you're like, I, I just can't get excited about this team. I don't know, like, like convince me what is different about this year's team than other teams. And you're just not going to really be able to see that until at least mid to late in the regular season. Weren't they underdogs in this I game? think they Am were I slight crazy? underdogs, yeah. I think they were Yeah, kind of hard to believe, uh, given, uh, 
you know, given what uh, Dallas did to yeah. him. But yeah, we saw. <laughs> um, Bucks Commanders. The Bucks looked pretty good. Um, I liked what I saw from Baker. He he looked like last year's Baker. I don't think we saw too much of a regression. He had some great throws to Mike Evans. Um, and, you know, the, the commanders, what are you going to say? It was, it was his first first game. I don't think the commanders are going to be very good, though. Their defense. They have no yeah, defense. I mean, that was obviously the problem last year. And they brought Dan Quinn in with the hopes of sort of uh, uh, rejuvenating that defense. But uh, not not off to a good start. And, you know, uh, new quarterback, I think there's some excitement around the team. Obviously, anytime you can bring in a, a, a top pick. But uh, Baker was the one who shined in this game, you know, and I think that's that's encouraging because we weren't sure if the Bucks, you know, what they were going to kind of do for an encore here. They've won the, the last two NFC South titles, which is, I don't know, just doesn't seem to get talked about a lot, right? Like they're kind of just, just kind of, I don't know, quietly, quietly doing it. Quietly, yeah. yeah, figuring it out. Yeah. They, we just talked about the Browns. The Browns got rid of Baker Mayfield for Deshaun Watson. I just I, I want to put that out there. I want to make sure that hits our airwaves. Yeah. They made the choice, the conscious choice, to say Baker goodbye, Deshaun, hello. It's, yeah, hard to believe, right? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, Rams-Lions. Matt Stafford is defeated against the Lions. I actually had this absurd conspiracy theory that is absolutely not true, but um, Matt Stafford made a deal with the devil, went up to the devil and said, Hey devil, I want to win a Super Bowl." Devil says, okay, you can't do it in Detroit though. You're not allowed to, you've been there too long. You got to bring your talents and and bring someone else up. Says, okay, I'll, I'll go to the Rams. Then he says, as soon as you win your Super Bowl." Like all of that lion's bad luck that you had to bear for, you know, your entire career, you will own it again as soon as you win the Super Bowl. And Stafford was just looking at like the the Super Bowl logo, like, yeah, man, sure, whatever. I'll take the Super Bowl and I'll, you know, the back end of my career will be, you know, not lucky because that was just a way that felt like a way the Lions would have lost. That felt like a way Matt Stafford would have lost a football game. They score late to tie it up. And then they lose in overtime because the defense was just absolutely gassed. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm yeah, saying muted. this is exactly what's happened. The Lions culture has, has turned around. I think you know, the Rams are playing a little undermanned. I, I understand that, especially defensively. You heard the announcers talking about kind of how gassed both teams were at the end of the game. You know, you, really these shorter preseasons mean that player conditioning is not going to be as good early in the year. Um, and they go to overtime and it just looked like the Rams had nothing left in the tank and the Lions go on the toss. And it was kind of like the old days just weren't right down the field and scored, although you have to get in the end zone. But, uh, but yeah, you know, the Lions offense, like they were great early and then they stopped performing and they gave up what 17 unanswered there and they had to dig deep and they had to put together a drive to get in the field goal range. And um, I think this, you know, like, yeah, you would love to see the Lions, if you're a Lions fan, come out and win 38 to 6. We're dominant. But you know you got to win close games. Be a championship caliber team. And the Lions last year, they got this week one Sunday night or, or you know, NBC thing down. They had a great, you know, gritty win on the road against the Chiefs to start last year. They have a kind of a grinded out win to start this year against the Rams. And I think you got to be encouraged if you're a Lions fan. Because if you lost this game at home to Stafford, Rams under man, home Sunday night and all that, Again, you feel like maybe, okay, it's one game, but you're fighting a little bit of an uphill battle. So mentally, emotionally, this is this is a good thing for the Lions, I would say. And the Rams, look, the Rams should be, you know, nothing to hang their heads about. I think they played a pretty good game, all things considered, especially with Puka Nakua out, Cooper Cup, kind of kind of similar to the Super Bowl when, you know, Beckham went out and, he, and him and Stafford were just a two-man show. So not a terrible start for the Rams either. It's unfortunate for them they couldn't win the game. Yeah, um, this was also another one of those. Your season ends here. You have to yeah, go back yes, and right. play so three again, three times or three teams. Revenge games. What's that? Revenge games. Reven yeah, or, revenge games. Basically. Right or humiliation games. However you want to look at them. I don't think 
Well, I'm I'm trying to see. I think every team that won the last time, yeah, also Lions won. beat the Rams, Col- uh, Texans beat the Colts, and the uh, Chiefs beat the Ravens. I'm trying to see if there was maybe any other. I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, and then finally, the big one, the Monday night game. Adam Sandler was was on the Manning cast. He had a hilarious moment when Rodgers threw a pick. And uh, he goes, well, I got to get off here. This this was my fault, guys. Um, but Aaron Rodgers, listen, he looked he looked nimble. Like, I'll, I'll say he, he looked good. He still has zip on the ball. That's clear. He still has a zip on the ball. I wouldn't worry about the Jets too much as much as I do not like the Jets and do not want them to win. It's week one. Rodgers, this is really like his first full game. Actually, not even full game. Didn't play a full game. Um, first game with the team, with, with a new team. So give them a give them a bit of time. 49ers, I, you know, it's the same old thing. They, they did everything kind of worked. And they, you know, put their foot down on their opponent. Um, my – First question about this game, and I guess I could look it up, is was this a scoregami 32 to 19? I have to know. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Football database tells me it is a scoregami. Okay. Whoa. Scoregami yeah. alert. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. There we go. FanDuel All tweeted right. about it with a little GIF notification or whatever. Uh, so, anyway. Um, Fun, That's fun stuff crazy, there. Crazy though, thirty-two uh, nineteen. Weird, right? Rogers plays the whole game this year and they win. He leaves after four plays last year, or sorry, and they lose this time. And then last year he goes out after four plays and they win. Like the Forty ers I this is a. I guess it's significant because CMC didn't play, and Jordan Mason still ran for a buck forty-seven. Purdy was efficient, no touchdown passes, but no picks. The Forty ers I mean, I don't know. I, they, they've wasted a playoff spot for so long, and it's like maybe just take a year off like they did after the last Super Bowl loss to the Chiefs. The 49ers? Oh, yeah. Well, in the sense that they have not You think they, they, the they have not won anything in 30 years. It just – then they've been there an awful lot, and they've been responsible for two Chiefs that, Super yeah. Bowl wins, and they're not exactly at the top of my fan list. And I know after they lost the first time to the Chiefs, they, I mean, that was the pandemic year, obviously. So a little bit of some slack to be cut there. It's just, yeah. Uh, same thing as I said with the Cowboys. I'm not really going to believe in this team unless they have some kind of historic season. Um, I'm not going to really feel like I trust them. You don't know can they all stay healthy? But obviously, for them, it's a big deal. They they lose the Super Bowl to the Chiefs. They got to come out and prove that like there's no hangover. So it was. Probably a big deal for them to get this win and probably even a bigger deal to win handily in the absence of arguably the best offensive player in the league. Yeah. Um, I I don't really think they wasted a playoff spot. I think well, Dallas, yeah, Dallas is a lot is, more. Yeah. You put them yeah. in that. No, no, no doubt about that. Dallas is the waste of, of wasters. Same thing as Cincy. I think, well, before Burrow, Cincinnati was a yeah. waste of a playoff spot before Burrow. Because they always felt like destined to be in like that early Sunday sl- or early Saturday slot of playoff games. Um, and they would just get the shit kicked out of them every single time. It was always hilarious. Uh, or really the AFC South, except for the Colts, like one year, a long time ago. Um <laughs> Anyways, let's let's move on. Uh, we're gonna go to our bets and just game picks um, for next week. Uh, I don't know how many bets you did get ready, Mike. Um, if you have them all, I'll start out. I'm taking Seattle minus three and a half. Um, I'm trying to find the game here. Where the hell is it? Where the hell is Seattle? Oh, they're playing the Pats. Um, I feel like Pats had a really emotional win. They said Jacoby Brissett was crying. He cried three times pregame against the Bengals. I feel like this is kind of a letdown spot for the Pats more than anything. Um, and Seattle wants to probably do something like worthwhile against a somewhat real team, uh, a team with a win. I think there's a little bit of a prove it in Seattle right now um, with, you know, you beat Denver. It's like, okay, cool. You beat Bo Nix and the horrible Broncos. Um, you have the Patriots. They're one and zero. 
you have your revenge for the Super Bowl, which I don't know how much it means to Seattle, you know, the players at least. Um, but I know it means it to the city. And three and a half seems like a small line too. I feel like that's that's pretty small. Um, I like Seattle to win by a touch. Yeah, they, well, they already got their revenge in 2016. They won on Sunday night, which is the only game that Tom Brady lost that year, the year of his deflate gate suspension when his backup was. Oh, well, yeah. it was Jimmy Garoppolo, but also Jacoby Brissett was actually on the team the last time. Uh, Seattle went to New England. I think that is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that Sunday night game well. Uh, but um, Seattle and the I don't know. I could see New England winning this game and getting off to a good start. It's a long flight. This game is in New England, right? Because I'm looking at um, just the way it's lined yes. up on this page that I was looking at. Uh, give me the give me the points. Why not? Because the Seahawks, they weren't out. New England yeah. plus three and a half. Jotting it down right now. Okay. All right. We're going head to head here. Um, my dog, the Tennessee Titans against the New York Jets. Um, they are four point dogs here on ESPN. It says three and a half, but I'm sticking with four. Um, I don't know why. I feel like the Titans are going to come out a little – a little amped up. You lose that game so, so just literally like this on your knees, cry, like screaming because you threw a pick six. Um, I like the Titans in this spot. It's a home game. Aaron Rodgers coming back. You know, they just got the shit kicked out of them. I feel like they're going to be a little, eh, you know, not super comfortable. I think they're going to be a little nervous and uh, the Titans will cover. I don't, I'm not going to predict uh, a win or a loss. I think it's going to be a really close game, though. Yeah. Um, hmm. Jets are three and a half point favorites. Yeah, I don't love them as a favorite in this spot, but they did just get embarrassed. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go with the Jets. Why not? Jets money line. Um, I have the Ravens money line. For my favorite money line, you're playing the Raiders. Raiders just did not look good. I know it's Gardner Minshew again. You know, you guys probably have a little PTSD yeah, from that, but master. I don't think this is Gardner. Got... This isn't Colts Gardner Minshew. Okay, this isn't Colts Gardner Minshew. He's not. He's not doing the same thing with the Raiders. Uh, no, I think you guys are more. This is a good bounce back spot for you. First home game back. You've had a, a good long rest to to figure things out. I think this is a great bounce back definitely, spot. Definitely like the Perfect. Ravens leaning towards that as a survivor pick. Um, barely survived mine with the Bills. But, but um, yeah, Ravens, you know, they have a little extra time to prepare here. Raiders don't possess a lot of uh, – they don't really strike any fear into you offensively, even though Minshew did win there last year. But I, I like the Ravens too. Yeah. Um, I'm going Rams money line against the Cardinals. They are a dog here, uh, one and a half. This this Rams team, like the way they played against Detroit, I feel like it's they're just too good. And the Cardinals, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Kyler running around. He's so little, you know. And I know this is a division game, so it's definitely tough to pick, and that's why it's almost a pick 'em. But um, I just don't trust the Cardinals ever. I really don't. And I really like the Rams in this spot. This is a good bounce back spot for them. Uh, I'm going to – like, I feel like that's the obvious pick, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, did I lose you there? Yeah, yeah, I lost you just for a second, but you're back. I, I, I was going to say I'm taking the Cardinals. It's the Rams look so obvious. And they probably will bounce back, but I don't know. I Just to be different, I'm taking the Cardinals. Um, I'm going over 45 and a half in Houston versus Chicago. Just because I want to root for points. I want to root for happy, fun times on Sunday Night Football. I want to root for a shootout that definitely seemed a little low to me, 45 and a half. I mean, it kind of um, – I could see Caleb Williams maybe finding a little bit of his energy um, coming into this game. He's under the bright lights. He gets those first game jitters out of there. I could also see Houston running away with this thing. Um, they're coming off a big win against the Colts on the road. Now they get to come back home. You know, this is the first home game since they lost that playoff game. Um, I, you know, I, 
I love I love the over, and it, the over is just fun to root for, especially in the primetime games. Who who doesn't bet the over in a, in a primetime spot? I, I I'd be more inclined to take Houston to just win big here. They're coming off a close win that should have been big. The Bears are coming off a win that probably should have been a loss. So uh, in prime time, uh, the favorites have done really well. I think they're 4-0 so far. So uh, let's keep that rolling. Although I do kind of like Miami as a as a slight dog uh, on Thursday. You, have, you like yeah. Miami as a dog? I think they're – Here, let's – we'll go uh, through the rest of the games and then we'll get out of here. Um, Bills, Dolphins. So you're oh, – so they're you, uh, I'm sorry. I thought – you're picking them to win outright, yeah, I like too? Yeah, the Dolphins. Uh, all right, to the Sunday games, Saints-Cowboys. Who do you like there? I'm going Bills. Um, Saints-Cowboys. Dallas has this early season thing down pat. I'm going Dallas. Yeah. I love Dallas here, too. Especially those, like, for, that, that, like first like eight to nine weeks, Dallas feels like almost like a lock. doesn't really matter who they play unless it's someone who is clearly better than them. Um, they feel like a lock. Bucks Lions in Detroit rematch of the NFC divisional game. Last year in the same spot where the Lions were at home off that big win, uh, they lost to Seattle. I like the Bucks with the points, seven points. I, I do. I, I think the Lions could still win, but I think I like the Bucks with the points. Yeah, little revenge game here. Two two revenge games. I like the Bucks. I like the Bucks out mm. outright. I love them to win this. I feel like they probably learned a lot from that game. Um, Troy, I think just about the week, like Baker doesn't exactly have a ton of playoff experience. You know, he he was there with the Browns against what Kansas City, right? I think that was that his only playoff appearance. Pretty sure it was that run in Cleveland. Um, I think he gained a lot of experience. I think the Lions. That was an emotional win on Sunday night too. You know they were they were probably exhausted beating Stafford again, um, being at home. You know this is there's probably their second biggest year. Like they're I would love the points and I out Colts Packers at Lambeau. The Colts are actually a three point favorite here. Um, I have a strong feeling that's because of Malik yeah. Willis. If Malik Willis is starting, I will go against my rule and say I think the Colts will win. <laughs> I think that yeah, I think I I do like the Colts. Um, if if they go out, I'll sign someone, and who that will be. I mean, who's who's even out there? <laughs> uh, well, they still have Mason Rudolph, don't they? Did they sign I, I thought, Mason Rudolph? No, uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe I heard that they were considering signing him. I, I thought maybe they'd signed him. Let me see here. Um, I thought he – no, he's for the Titans. He plays uh, for the Titans. I think we just talked about the Jets and Titans, but I'm leaning – yeah, I'm I'm, I'm leaning uh, um, to win outright. It's, like, really tight. You know, that's this is probably going to be a close one. But the Jets could also just come out and look completely different and dominate. So I could be really burned here. Yeah, this is a hard one to pick. I mean, I think I'd lean towards the Jets. Niners, Vikings – Going, yeah. going Niners very Same easily. Here. Seahawks, Pats. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick because I like to let things marinate a little bit. I'm gonna stick with Seattle. I'm sticking with Seattle, but like the Pats are like creeping into my mind a little bit. Um, I'm still going with the Pats points. Giants, Commanders. Everyone loses if you watch this game. Um. No, I'm going Commanders. I mean, what is there? At least there's a little bit of redeeming quality with the Commanders with the offense. There's no redeeming. Yeah, boy, their offense just stinks. I guess I'll go with the Commanders. I see it being a tight game. I can see the Giants winning, honestly. I mean, so it's almost a pick them anyway. Um, Chargers, Panthers. The, the Chargers will win. This How is it only prediction. six and a half? A I mean, honestly, that feels guaranteed. like a good value for a team that just as awful as the Panthers. Yeah. That could be a good favorite mm. bet, too. Um, Browns, Jags. Uh, I think the last time these two teams saw each other, the Browns won last year. Um, really close game. Uh, but as long as Deshaun is starting, it's 
It's got to yeah, be the Jets. The only quarterback, actually, Deshaun's the only quarterback that I'm less confident in the abilities that their fan base brings them up uh, compared to Trevor Lawrence. I am less confident in Deshaun Watson's abilities right now. Um, Raiders, Ravens, going Ravens, easy. Yeah, yeah, too, I absolutely. Assume. Rams, Cardinals. I love the Rams here. I absolutely love them. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with the Cardinals. I don't know why. Just a, just a hunch. Steelers, Broncos. Um, man, just the Steelers find a find a way to get it done. They find a way, and the Broncos didn't exactly put any confidence in my brain in them. Um, so I'm going Steelers here. Mm, yeah, yeah, the Broncos just look so awful. But sometimes that's that's when you take a team coming off a, a game like that. Uh, it's just both of these. I mean, Russ is coming back to Denver, but I guess he's not starting. Uh, I don't like either team in this game. I think we need it. We're, we're, we're uh, I'm going to go Denver just, just to mix it up. I'm just going to go Denver. Because it just looks so obvious that Pittsburgh's All supposed right. to win. I, I don't have any real reason. But they, you know uh, what? As bad as Bo Nix played, they were close on the scoreboard with Seahawks. At least take the point. At least take the three. Um, three, I guess. Yeah, the three and a half sounds yeah, pretty buy good. that one up. Um, Bengals Chiefs. Next. This is a tough no, one. I mean. I don't know. I think this is a tough one. Are they going to wake up? I think they have to. They might wake they up. They do have to. Um, there is <laughs> there is that sense that they don't want to fall to zero and two, um, and you know you, you have your your big rivalry. They saw what the Ravens just went through. So, I mean, maybe maybe that's a good one to take with the points. I I still think the Chiefs are going to win, but. I always think they're going to win. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like the Chiefs' money line, but I think that six is pretty big. I, I think since he's going to put up a bit of a fight. Yeah, I know they have long. to, I think, with the with staring 0-2 in the face and also playing your rival. They'll, they'll gear up for this game. I don't think they'll lay an egg. Yeah. Um, Bears-Texans. I just got to go with the Texans. Yeah. They're, the Bears are... Yeah. Yeah, I'm with I'm with you there. I think that's perfect spot to you know, get Houston to 2 and 0. They like I said, they probably deserve to win by more than they did last week against the Colts. The Bears probably deserve to lose that game to Tennessee. I know Williams wants to play well in prime time, but it's only his second game. So I'm go, I'm going Houston there. Yeah. And then Falcons Eagles the Monday night game. Um the the Falcons didn't give me anything anything Kirk didn't look great you know and the Eagles were fine Jalen Hurts was fine um he made some mistakes but he was also you know somewhat somewhat involved on Friday so I'm going Philly uh spread is what uh, six and a half six and a half Kirk Cousins that seems kind of Kirk Cousins prime time or what's that those that seems like Good points to take. I, I would take Atlanta plus six and a half there. Uh, yeah, just because Philly, right? I, I, yeah. It's like, do you play the same logic that you play in Houston, where the, and do you get the two six and a halves? If I took Atlanta, I'd have to buy it up to seven and a half or eight. I'd have to grab a couple more points. Atlanta just never wins in Philly. They just don't in their history. Matt Ryan like never really won there. Michael Vick didn't win there in the championship game. Atlanta just doesn't have good history in Philly. Lost a couple playoff games there too. Um, both years that the Eagles actually made the Super Bowl. So uh, yeah, if I don't love that either bet, but if I took Atlanta, I would take points, or I'd go the other way and buy the Eagles down to like four and a half or five. All right. Okay. Well, that's every game. Um, thank you all for watching or listening. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, the whole thing. And we will see you on Wednesday.